helpful travel tips on what you need to know about Nungui on Zanzibar Island coming up. And if you're new here, I'm Christine with Where in the World is Seattle. I make travel videos every week to help you get up, get out, and go travel. So if you like to travel, consider subscribing. This video is part of a larger Zanzibar series, and today we are diving into some helpful tips that I wish I knew before I went to Nungui. So let's dive in. Let's start with where it's located. Nungui is on the north side of the island, and if you're considering traveling around Zanzibar, my guess is you're considering Stone Town, Page, Jambiani, and then Nungui. You're likely coming in from Stone Town. That's where all the planes and all the boats come in from. And the drive up to Nungui, depending on traffic, should take you about an hour and a half. A lot of locals will say that Nungui has the best beaches in Zanzibar. And there are a lot of really beautiful beaches in Zanzibar, but Nungui definitely puts up quite the competition. The beaches in Nungui on the North Island of Zanzibar are supposed to be the best. And I'm in Kendwa, which is supposedly the best beaches. And I think I can see why. One helpful tip to know is that Kendwa Beach is significantly better, in my opinion, than Nungui Beach. And the reason why I say this is because Nungui Beach is a little bit smaller. There's not a whole lot going on over there except a couple resorts, but it's just a smaller beach and is not as kept up as Kendwa. The beaches in Nungui are supposed to be some of the best, but you gotta go to Kendwa because over here on the north side, it's a little bit of a smaller beach. And speaking of Kendwa, there are a couple things that you have to do here. You have to watch the sunset from Kendwa. It's so, so beautiful. And one of the things I wished I did that I missed was getting on one of the sunset boat tours. They have drummers on board and you basically sail around during the sunset. So whether you're on the beach or on one of these boats, don't miss it. Ooh, and let me give you an important tip to know, especially if you're considering getting into the water, even just chilling in the water. Make sure you're looking at the tide calendar because especially when it's low tide, it's pretty extreme in Zanzibar. The tide will go out pretty far and it will expose a lot of the sea urchins that you might not actually see. So it's really important that you're wearing sandals that strap to your feet or water shoes when you're getting in the water because stepping on a sea urchin can totally ruin your vacation. And I wouldn't want that to happen to you. Which by the way, if you're getting some value out of this video, cheers that like button if you haven't already and make sure you check out the entire Zanzibar playlist. And, and if you have tips for things that you know about Zanzibar, drop them in the comments below. Let's talk about the other thing you need to know about the calendar. And what I mean by that is knowing when it's a full moon on the calendar, because then Kendwa Rocks has their full moon party, which is so much fun. It's out on the beach and it's a really great time to enjoy some drinking and dancing. And they have tons of food options available while you're enjoying the party. I loved going to this party and dancing on the beach to DJ Cartel. I have to give him a shout out. He put on a phenomenal performance. Make sure you're looking for him, whether at the full moon party or in other spots around Zanzibar. And to be able to enjoy some of these things I'm talking about, it's helpful to know where to stay. And these are a couple things I wish I knew prior to traveling there. One is it's really important to stay on the beach, on a beach property. Because everything was booked up, I'm staying off of the beach at Opera Hotel, and I can't exactly say I'd recommend it. It's not terrible, but it's not great. And it's not a place that you can easily walk around. The beach roads are really, really rough. And while it's totally, totally doable to walk around, it doesn't necessarily mean it's enjoyable, especially if you're doing it at night, which make sure you check out my other Zanzibar video about needing a driver, because I do recommend getting a driver depending on what the rest of your itinerary looks like. That other video will help you a lot. So let's say you do stay on the beach. If I could do it over, I would stay as close to Kendwa Rocks as possible because that's where the majority of the activity and fun things to do are happening. But one thing to know that aside from the Kendwa Rocks property, a lot of the properties on the beach are really far from the beach. The bummer about this beach is that the really awesome setups to enjoy the beach are so far from the actual water 
And so you're not actually anywhere near the beach when you're chilling at the beach. So you're, you're not actually sitting on the beach. So that's just one thing to know about how it's set up out there. But I will say that the resorts on this side of the island, well, first of all, you can find resorts unlike the smaller, more boutique style hotels that you'll find on the John Biani Page side. Make sure you check out that video. But it does tend to be more expensive on this side of the beach versus the prices that I was seeing in John Biani and Page. And speaking of expensive, another helpful tip to know is that relative to other parts of the island, food here, in my experience, tended to be more expensive than other places that I'd gone to. One of the spots I ate at was this one, alas. Another tip around money, there aren't a ton of ATMs on this side of the island. So if there are things where you need to run errands, such as going to the ATM, SIM cards, things of that nature, buying things in general, you might wanna do that in Stonetown and not wait until you get to this side of the island. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's not nearly as easy. And make sure if you know anything about Zanzibar, add your tips below. I'm only speaking from my experience and I'm sharing as many helpful tips as I can. All right, let's talk about the next one. Whoo, just scuba diving. I love diving. And if there's a part of the island you should consider doing it at, it's here in Nungui. You'll find that versus John Biani Page, you'll find more calmer waters. Although the day that I went, it was not calm. And actually the visibility was terrible, but depending on where you've gone diving in the world, I found some of the most unique things in the water in Zanzibar versus other places I've been to, like Thailand, the Philippines, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, etc. There's some cool stuff in the water here. My price for diving, I went with East African Diving. They were awesome. It cost me $100 for two dives, and I would recommend them. <laughs> one that you can't miss if you want to get on the water but not necessarily scuba dive but just snorkel. Consider driving to the east side of the island and taking a boat out to Nemba Island. That's my boat. Wait, jellyfish. Just what? kidding. Oh, don't scare me like <laughs> Unless you're staying in one of the few cottages that's on the island, it's actually a private spot, so you can't actually go onto the island, but you can go onto the sandbar that's near the island, and there's also a reef for snorkeling. Make sure you're looking at the tide calendar and trying to time going out to that sandbar when it's low tide. When I was out there, I was probably ankle deep when we got in and 20 minutes later, I was like up to my thighs in water and I would have liked to spend more time on the sandbars. You gotta check the tides because our sandbank is now under water. And make sure you jump in the water at the reef. <laughs> There's a lot of really great fish in the water and it's really, really beautiful. All right, don't forget that this is a video that's part of a larger series about Zanzibar. So check the link in the description below for more info. And if you've made it this far, I have a secret for you. There's a video that I'm making that talks about some of the scams that I experienced when I was in Zanzibar. And it doesn't mean this is gonna happen to you, but I make these videos because I wanna share my experiences because I'm trying to make the video I wish I got to watch before I traveled here so I can be a smarter traveler. Not everyone on YouTube can understand that. And so if you want this video, link in the description below because I want you to have a great time in Zanzibar because it's a really fun place. And BTW, I'm filming this while uh, in Oahu if you want to travel to the other side of the world for a beach. So videos on that as well on my channel. I'm here every week. Thank you for sticking around. I'll see ya in the next one. Ciao.